Okay, hello, we are group 1091, and we are evaluating the effect of care factors on infant mortality for SCUDEM 2023, the ODE competition. So the problem we chose is kangaroo care, um, but we modified it to be for human infants because we found a lot more data with human infants. So we chose this problem because we all want to be involved in medicine in our futures, and it's very relevant and it's great practice. So some assumptions we made about this problem were if there's no care within the first 24 hours, the baby will have zero chance of survival. This gave us the initial condition Y at zero equals zero when we are focusing on our survivability ODE. So our survival rate wing weight range for the baby is one kilogram to five kilograms. Any weights outside of these we are not considering in this problem, just to simplify things. We are assuming proper medical care like vaccines and modern medicine. Um, we are also ignoring external health factors like genetic conditions or any problems that the baby might have at birth. So we are assuming that there is an average of four hours of feeding per day. This applies to holding time as well. Our four hours of feeding and holding time combine to be our eight hours of ideal care per day for the baby. So our feeding time is incorporated into our weight parameter because the more you feed the baby, the bigger it gets. The mothers are in perfect health and we are also assuming complete skin to skin contact for all interactions. So every interaction counts as care time for the baby. Our general approach was picking our independent parameters, and we will get into those a little bit later. So our feeding time, holding time, exposure to high risk areas, and our natural weight variation were topics we decided to focus on. Um, what we did is we took these parameters and we were able to make equations based on data we found that you will see later in our citations. And we made these equations and then combined them all to make our ODEs, which are weight and chance of survival. So weight depends on feeding time, natural weight variation and holding time, and then chance of survival depends on the baby's exposure to infection and its weight. Feeding time. This is our first independent parameter. Each day represents four hours of feeding time, and you can see if the baby gets fed zero hours per day, then it will gain zero weight. So our holding time is a lot like the feeding time, except we have a different y-intercept. Um, this, we are not measuring the change in weight, but we are actually just measuring the infant weight in general. So we are gonna have a different y-intercept of three kilograms instead of zero. Um, and if you combine this with the feeding time, you get eight hours of ideal care per day, which is the standard. So our next parameter is exposure to high-risk areas. This includes um, the baby being exposed to infection or illness or disease. Um, and you can see that zero exposure, we automatically assume that the baby has a 100% survival chance. So this is a parameter that we couldn't figure out how to incorporate into our ODEs. This is body temperature for survival versus survivability. And we found that the regular body temperature of a mother is 37 degrees Celsius, and we kind of just assumed that that would be applicable to the baby as well. Um, but we couldn't necessarily incorporate this into our weight ODE, and we couldn't incorporate this into our survivability ODE based on the parameters we wanted to look at, so we ended up dropping it. So our final solution graphs are our expected weight versus time and our expected survivability versus time. These are graphs that we made by taking our parameters and combining them and looking at points that our parameters would make when we combined them and then splining those points together. So we made functions in between each of these points. So the functions in the code are actually really complicated. They're very high order polynomials. However, the functions actually look really pretty graphed out. So these are our ODEs. And again, survivability depends on the weight ODE, which is why they are coupled. Um, and let us move on into actually how we built these ODEs. Now that we've seen our solution graphs, how did we build the ODEs that went into that? So we landed on two coupled ODEs, one for weight, one for chance of survivability, both in respect to time and found that weight we wanted to be a parameter for percent chance survival, but weight had its own parameters and independent variables. So that's how we landed on building coupled ODEs. So we started to find these variables or these ODEs by researching expected points for change in weight and change in survival chance at select days that we could then spline using third order splines. So then once we did that, we were able to extract a function that described our change in weight over or versus time and our change in chance of survivability over time. 
So that leads us to us creating the code for that, where you can see here are our points for weight change with time and then percent chance with time. And these points we found through research, and then we used just interp1 with our third degree splines, and then we extracted those functions. Then plotting those, we got these graphs, which this is kind of what we were expecting, where through like our natural weight variation research, we expected this, this dip um, uh, between zero and five days, kind of a peak at around 10 days, and then another dip, and then that steady increase in weight, and then over in DSDT. This initial dip with, um, you know, weaker babies, lighter babies, less fat, you know, exposure to high-risk areas would have more effect, so a decrease, and then another decrease when, you know, exposure to these high-risk areas has been prolonged, and then in a, a, a gradual increase as the baby gains weight, has more holding time, has more feeding time, etc., etc. Um, and just to note, this DSDT time, that is in hours on the x-axis, where DWDT is in days. Okay, so for our solution methods, we could not get an exact solution. Our ODEs were just too complex for that, so we decided on two approximate solutions that we would then compare. RK4 and Euler's method. We chose Euler's method because we knew it was dependable, we could get it to work for our ODEs, but we know it's not always the most accurate, so we also threw an RK4, which performed more evaluations. That would give us, you know, some, some higher accuracy points. And here are our codes that are finding that with some user-defined functions that we, we were using with RK4 and Euler's, which I can show here. Here's our user-defined function for Euler's method, where, you know, we're just using the standard Euler's method and then iterating for each of our output values. And the same thing with our K4, iterating for each of our mesh points. K1 through 4, those are our point evaluations that go into the RK4 method, etc., etc. And that is how we found those approximate solutions that are upcoming. Here we want to compare our solutions method. For Euler's method, we see for survivability, Euler's method was quite off of our exact function chosen based off of our points, which is the red line, we see that it follows the general curve, but is quite a bit lower. And this shows how Euler's method has quite a bit of error for survivability. Meanwhile, for weight, Euler's method fits pretty quite well on the interior points, but for the exterior points, we definitely see a bit more error, and especially in the beginning of our function. For our RK4, we see that RK4 tends to fit the lines a bit better in terms of shape. We do see, however, for weight, that it does have, I would say, about the same error as Euler's as it spreads out furthermore in the exterior points, but is a bit closer in the beginning. However, for our survivability, although it does follow the same patterns, it does make a much smoother curve and allows for prediction of different curves in the area and different values in the area as we change our factors. So we, when we change the amount of both of feeding time in this case, we see that the weight change per day does go up. It does take about 15 days, 10 to 15 days before we start to see an increase in our weight gain, but this is because babies don't gain weight instantaneously and they need a little time to gain weight. However, we do see that when feeding time is lowered, the weight gain, the weight loss is at a much smaller magnitude than the weight gain. And this depends on how much the feeding time is lowered by. When for the for survivability, we see that as feeding time is raised, we don't see too much of an increase in the change in survivability. But when feeding time is lowered, we see a drastic decrease as feeding is necessary, food is necessary for survival. So it's really important to maintain a consistent feeding time. And here we see our change in holding time. On the left, we see our weight gain. And the weight gain, we don't see too much of an effect when holding time is lower. This is assuming full feeding time. So we won't see too much of a weight loss or a weight change. We're just going to kind of see a consistent weight throughout the lack of holding time. However, when holding time is increased, we do see a much higher weight gain per day, as this is shown by the kangaroo mother care to increase the weight of babies through skin-to-skin -skin contact. We also see survivability here. We see a similar trend as the holding time is raised. We see a much higher chance of survival, as this is good for both for the baby. However, when holding time is lowered, we do see a decrease in chances of survival, as the effective care is going to be less frequent. So for our model, we described, decided that the most important factors for kangaroo mother care were going to be the holding time, the feeding time, and the time spent in a high-risk area. 
These impact the infants because holding time and feeding time are, we coupled them in our model as feeding time being a part of holding time, but we, this allows for a change in weight gain and survivability chances based on the different factors. We, our model indicates that it is not possible to skip care for a day at regular intervals because we did couple feeding time into holding time. Holding time is necessary for regular feeding. And if you don't feed your baby, we have bad news. Um, this, so we do think, however, that we can spread the care out during different times of the day, of each day. We do look at it from a day perspective, and this allows for some flexibility in the day-to-day -day care, but overall, every day would need regular intervals of care. Our model does have quite a few assumptions that limit how this can be interpreted for effective kangaroo mother care, but it does indicate that these factors do have a very large influence on survivability and on weight gain, and both of which are important for the health of the baby. And here we see some of our citations. And thank you for your attention.